Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. It's Sunday morning and we're in the house of the Lord. We come to worship. We come to glorify. We come to magnify the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us wave our hands in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet this morning and let us give God a glory and a praise. Because of him, we're here today. Hallelujah. He kept us another week. Hallelujah. We have been fighting. We have struggled this week. But here we are in the presence of the Lord. And the Bible said in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. Let us shout out a praise to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We come for no other purpose. We come for no other reason this morning but to worship our King. Worship the King of Kings. Worship the Lord of Lords. We, we just give thanks to God for this day. Amen. We glorify him for this day. Amen. Many people are lying up in the hospitals today. They can't walk. They can't move. They would wish to be here. We are here with all our faculties intact. And we are giving God glory. Hallelujah. I look across to my right and I saw, I see Brother Fishley. Hallelujah. If you know anything about Brother Fishley this morning. Hallelujah. If you know anything about what he's going through and his struggles, you would have given God the praise just to see him. Just to see him in the house of the Lord today. We give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless God. And I don't know what you come with today. And I don't know what position you're in. I heard one preacher said that our lives are like onions and when we sit in our seat there are very many different versions of ourselves. I don't know what version of yourself show up in the house of God today but I'm here to tell you that whatever your need is today whatever our needs are today we serve a God hallelujah who can supply all your needs so whatever you need from God today tap in worship give him praise and you will not leave here like you came amen hallelujah 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 we're just going to begin our service this morning our praise and worship team is coming and before I, they come I just want to welcome all our online church Hallelujah. We, we're happy for you today. Wherever you are worshiping from today. Hallelujah. Whether you're at home in your car, whichever country you're tuning in from, we know that God is everywhere. And we, we expect a blessing. Expect something super 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 blessing this morning beyond the ordinary because our God is capable amen hallelujah hallelujah our consecration song will be done by the praise team and then we'll have our scripture reading by sister Janice Lewis and brother Nick will lead us in prayer hallelujah let's bless the Lord oh be lifted Above all other gods, we lay your crowns and worship you. Oh, be lifted, oh, be lifted. Above all other gods, we lay your crowns, we lay your crowns and worship you. Above all other gods, we lay our crowns, we lay our crowns and worship all you. glorious God, all glorious God, we praise your name, we lay our crowns and worship. Above all other gods, we lay our crowns, we lay our crowns we and worship you. Oh, be lifted, oh, be lifted. Above all other gods, we lay our crowns. 
crowds and worship you. Oh, glorious God. Oh, glorious God. We praise your name. We lay our crowns and worship you. Oh, glory great things he has done we lay our crowns and worship our God our sovereign God the creator of heaven and earth good morning brethren I'm here to read the scripture which comes to us from Psalm 24 a Psalm of David please turn your Bibles with me and it reads the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is a generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up. He everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? 
the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, holy gates, even lift them up. He everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Selah. Here endeth a portion of God's holy word. We honor it by saying, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Let's just stay in this attitude of worship as we go before the Lord in prayer. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We worship you, Father. We exalt you. Father, we just decree that you are the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. So we thank you that you are a victorious God. We thank you that there is no battle that we go through that is too strong for you, Father. We thank you, God, that there's no adversary that we face that you have not already overcome, Father. We thank you that there's no illness that suffers our body that you haven't already healed, Father. We just declare that you are the King of glory, the Lord's strong and mighty God. So we thank you that there's no mental anguish that plagues our mind that you haven't healed us from already, God. We thank you, Lord, that there's no infirmities that our body suffers, God, that you haven't delivered us from already, God. We thank you that there's no generational curses or generational bloodlines, God, that we go through, Lord, that you haven't already redeemed us from, oh God. We just declare that you are the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty. So we thank you that you already defeated death, hell, and the grave, God. We thank you that, Lord, there's nothing that we go through that catches you by surprise, God. We just declare <laughs> that you're the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty. So we thank you, God, that the very nature itself responds to your voice. When you said, let there be light, light came into existence. We thank you, God, that nature responds when you speak, oh God. We just declare that you you are the king of glory, Lord, strong and mighty. So we thank you, God, that when we speak the name Jesus in hospitals, we expect there to be healing. We thank you that when we speak the name Jesus over marriages, we expect there to be restoration. We thank you that when we speak the name Jesus over families, we expect there to be reconciliation. We just declared that you are the king of glory, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, strong and mighty. We just declared that you are the king of glory, the Lord strong and mighty. So we thank you that when you decree a thing, it shall be established in the earth, oh God. So in this atmosphere, Lord, we declare, Lord, that you are moving even now, God, that the king of glory is descending in this place, that the Lord strong and mighty is moving through the congregation in the name of Jesus. We declare that every soul will come in contact with the King of Glory. We declare that every soul will come in contact with the Lord strong and mighty. We declare that every problem must bow down to the King of Glory. We declare that every sickness must bow down to the Lord strong and mighty. We declare that every illness must bow down to the King of Glory. In the name name of G ah, we lift up the name of Jesus in this atmosphere we lift up the name of Jesus in this place oh God in the name of Jesus we declare that every chain must be loosed by the king of glory we declare that every yoke must be broken by the Lord strong and mighty in the name of Jesus that this is not just a service this is a divine appointment with God that this is a divine appointment with heaven in the name of in the name of Jesus we just declared that you're the king of glory the Lord strong and mighty so every person watching online experience the king of glory every nation watching online experience the Lord strong and mighty in the name of Jesus 
Matarabato Tore, Rakandalemeko to Rabatateya, in the name of Jesus, King of Glory, descend here, King of Glory, Dekete de Rebatuduya, descend here, Lord strong and mighty, descend here, in the name of Jesus, even as the heavens were open and the angel of God descended like a dove, we pray that the heavens would be open over Ebenezer, that the Spirit of God would descend even now, Ratanda. Come on, church, let's pray, in the name of Jesus. That the angel of the Lord would move, oh God. That the spirit of the Lord would descend now in the name of Jesus. You said if we decree a thing, it shall be established. So we decree that in the atmosphere where the king of glory is, that healing is taking place, that deliverance is taking place, that restoration is taking place, that no soul shall come in contact with God and leave the same in the name of Jesus. That no soul shall drink from the rivers of God and leave the high in the name of Jesus let the king of glory begin to move let the Lord strong and mighty begin to move in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus you said if we ask anything your name you will do so father we pray and we speak that this is an atmosphere where prayers are being answered we pray that this is an atmosphere where souls are being replenished we pray that this is an atmosphere where people that are thirsty for the moving and power of God will experience the glory of God in a new way your words said it is the glory of God to conceal a matter and the honor of kings to search it out so we thank you that things that have been made in secret shall be revealed in this atmosphere that a fresh presence of God shall be revealed in this atmosphere in the name of Jesus even as you came on a donkey and Lord we praise you and Lord we lifted up hands and glorified you Father we pray that even as you enter into this sanctuary God that our focus would be upon you that our eyes would be upon you that we would only see you and that we would see you clearly you are Jesus the Christ you are Jesus the anointed one you are Jesus the Savior you are Jesus the Redeemer you are our cornerstone you are the one that we cling to you are the Lord you change is not so the same God that descended on Mount Sinai can also descend this morning the same God that said to the man do you want to be made whole can also make souls whole this morning so let it be an atmosphere where your children are being made whole, Father. Let it be an atmosphere that everything that your children need from you, they gain from you, Father. That as you inhabit the praises of us, your people, we thank you, Lord, that we are meeting heaven. We thank you that the heavens are open before us, oh God. And that prayers are being answered. We thank you that we are coming into contact with a new side of you, Father. We thank you. As your word said, behold, you make all things new. We thank you that you're blowing our mind as to what you can do on a Sunday morning. That you're blowing our mind as to what you can do when the church gathers and prays. And when the church gathers and worship. We thank you that you're blowing our mind as to what you can do when we meet you on a Sunday morning. So we surrender this day into your hands. We surrender this service into the leading of the Holy Spirit. We surrender every praise that goes forth, every item that is said, every offering, every word. We surrender it to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Your word says, those that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. So we surrender these two or three hours that we gather to your Spirit, Father. Your word says that you've written our days in your book. So Father, we know that you have penciled Ebenezer in the courts of heaven. So everything that you have written about us this morning, let it be accomplished and done in the earth. We agree with your spirit. We agree with your plans. We agree with your will. We agree with your purpose. And we declare that this is an atmosphere that we will never lead the same. For your word says that signs shall follow them that believe. So we declare this is an atmosphere that signs are even following us now. That children, that sons and daughters that have never seen a side of God will begin to see that in this atmosphere. 
that have wondered if God can really do what he says will see that in this atmosphere. That this is an atmosphere that will answer the curiosity in the hearts of men. That this is an atmosphere that will answer the doubts and questions in the hearts of men. In the name of Jesus, be glorified in our presence, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yesterday is gone. Tomorrow may never come. But we have this moment to give God our best praise. Amen. Where he has created us to worship him. So as we come in this morning, just remember that we have one person one person our audience is one this morning we forget everything that is around us and we focus all our attention on god and give him our best worship this morning amen praise god hallelujah hallelujah glory to god thank you jesus Hallelujah. Come, you can start putting your hands together. Today, oh, I will lift up my voice in praise. Today.
Just come my way. I will praise you, Lord. No matter, no matter what I see, when troubles come my way, I will praise you, Lord. Today, oh. Today, oh. I will lift up my voice and praise.
want to exalt your name we just want to lift you up God give you the glory and praises oh God that is due unto you hallelujah we're going to do this song one more time we'll be lifted above all other gods where we serve a God who is not made by man amen we serve the God who created us who is sovereign who is all-powerful 
hallelujah oh we worship you jesus we glorify you oh god we magnify your name oh god for you are worthy this morning you are worthy oh god we bless you we bless you we bless you hallelujah we lay aside everything oh god everything that is of importance to us oh god we cast them aside this morning oh god and we honor you oh god we honor you we exalt you for you are worthy god hallelujah oh be lifted Before you, we 
acknowledge this morning that there is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. No matter how we search, no matter how we test, there is nobody like our God. And we come here today to worship. Can we worship the Lord? Can we bask in the presence of the Lord this morning? Can we celebrate Jesus for who he is? Hallelujah. Can we stay right here today? Can we stay in the presence of God? Can we lift our voices towards heaven and declare that God is God? He is the creator. He is the way maker. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's nobody like our God this morning. Nobody like our God. Can we stay in the presence of our God? Can we stay in the presence of our God today? Hallelujah. 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 See, I know what it's like. Hallelujah. To be in the presence of the Lord. And I know what time it is Cause time stood still You see, bodies are healed And families restored Because we stayed here in the presence of the Lord Jesus. See, no one had to say a word. Couldn't even make a sound. But I'd give up everything For this treasure I found I don't want it to end Let me do that again See, I know what it's like to be in the presence of the Lord. And not know what time it is. Because time stood still. See, in the presence of the Lord, bodies are healed, and families restored, because we stayed here. In the presence of the Lord No one had to say a word Thank you, Jesus Couldn't even make a sound But I'd give up everything For this treasure I found God, I never want it to win So stay to go cause my heart is burning 
in the presence of the Lord. Please stay. Thank you, Jesus. I don't want you to go. Cause my heart is burning In your presence, oh Lord Cause I want of God. Is your heart burning today? Hallelujah. 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 Let us spend some time here, right here. Right here in his presence. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord. 
Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord. We magnify you, Jesus. There is no one like our God. Amen. There is no one like our God today. No one more powerful. No one that can save. Hallelujah. Let us worship him. Don't leave here like you came this morning. Whatever you brought 
to God. Leave it at the altar today. Hallelujah. Leave it at the foot of the cross. Walk out victorious. Hallelujah. Walk out delivered in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. <laughs> we magnify you, God. We adore you, Heavenly Father. We thank you today. <laughs> oh, glory. 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 <laughs> glory. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. Almighty God, I want more. I want more. I want more. Glory to the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us give the God, God a mighty hand clap of praise today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> the men on the road to Emia said, didn't our heart burn within us while you walk with us along the road? <laughs> this morning is one such experience when we are in a presence that we don't want to get out of. <laughs> we want to stay right here. <laughs> we want to stay here today. So whatever else is on the agenda today, we leave it to the spirit of the living God just to have his way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must not leave this place like we came today. <laughs> Healing is in the house. Healing is in the house. Deliverance is in the house. Hallelujah. The presence of the living God is in the house. Let us worship. Hallelujah. 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 Mighty God. Ha. Ah. This is one morning when you want to just lay out in the presence of God and you just don't want to move. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We want to welcome the Father. We want to welcome the Son. We want to welcome the blessed Holy Ghost in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said it. I'm going to say that again. We want to welcome the Father. We want to welcome the Son. <laughs> we want to welcome the blessed Holy Ghost <laughs> in our midst today. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We want to welcome our Bishop and our First Family, First Lady Rose and Sharon. I want to welcome them. Hallelujah. It's hard. It's kind of hard to move on. It's hard to move on. It's hard to move from this place. But I want to welcome you all into the house of the Lord. All those of you who are watching online, I know you're feeling the same way. Because I know the presence of the Lord is wherever you are today. So wherever, whatever country, whatever place you're tuning in from today, we welcome you here at Ebenezer. And we thank you that you choose the time to worship with us. We can't leave this place because of the presence of the the Lord and so we we know that wherever you are today you are experiencing the same thing and so we give God glory we give him praise if we are first time or second time visitors just wave your hands in the sanctuary hallelujah hallelujah just stand to your feet and let us recognize you today stand to your feet hallelujah hallelujah we thank you for visiting today we are grateful that you choose to be with us today Day. hallelujah we know you don't just come for us you come to receive from the Lord and I know that you are already receiving hallelujah so we welcome you we welcome everyone who is here to worship with us today in the name of Jesus stay tuned stay in tune and now we are inviting our bishop to come and to do the offering hallelujah praise the Lord God bless you God bless you let's give the Lord a big hand of praise today Amen, 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 amen. God bless you, God bless you. Thank you for being in the house of the Lord today. I can tell you standing here looking at you, you look wonderful. I, it's hard for me to imagine if you were not here, what service would be like. 
and I don't want to imagine or see it. So please, come on out to church. Amen? It's beautiful. I drove up this morning, and I saw a family walking to church together. The kids with their parents. I'm telling you, man, that's the most beautiful sight in all the world, to see a family come to church on Sunday morning. Isn't that, isn't that wonderful? So I, I encourage you, bring your family out to church. Bring your kids. You know, bring your spouse. And let us enjoy the presence of the Lord together. Praise the Lord. I want to welcome you all. I, I was absent last Sunday, and I heard you had a wonderful time. You're not listening to me. I told you you must not enjoy church when I'm not here. Nah, I'm just playing. I know you had a great time. Minister Mark Turpin preached, and we had Sister Anna and Sister Virginia with us yes, last year, last week, and they're back again today to celebrate the last day of the feast. Isn't that good? Praise God. Praise God. Good to see Brother Fishley here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And playing the guitar as well. Only heaven knows what he has been through. But I'm glad that he is persevere and fighting it through. God bless you, Brother Fishley. We're happy you're here. Happy every one of you. If you're here for the first time or first time guest or second time guest, we are certainly blessed and happy that you came to church. Amen? Praise the Lord. I, I uh, also would like to take this opportunity to welcome all of our online guests. And I know we have many. Many of our members are online. I thank you for being online. I will thank you more when you come out to church. <laughs> but I'm thankful that you are online and you are in church with us. Thank God for you. And many of you are faithful with your tithes and your offerings still, and I appreciate that. God bless you for it. Whatever blessing comes with that, it is yours in Jesus' name. I want to appreciate and thank all of our online guests that are outside of the country of the USA. Some in England, some in uh, Suriname and Guyana and Jamaica and Grenada, Grenada and Jamaica and uh, Trinidad and Tobago, Guyana. We have just a lot of visitors who worship with us online, and they're now part of our family. We have some in New York, in Florida. We have members in Florida, the Wallacons, and they are in church every Sunday. Brethren, I'm blessed and happy to know that our church has reached so far and wide, and so many people are in line with us every, every week. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Praise the Lord. If I, if I miss anyone, I'm acknowledging you right now. All those who I miss, God bless you. I love you, and I'm glad you're in church. Now, um, I, I do, I sad, with sadness, I announced today that Sister India. India has lost her mom. I think it was yesterday. He said, India, we, uh, well, you can call her India as well. I'm not sure which is the right pronunciation. Sister India, would you stand, please, so everybody can see who you are? We, we want to publicly say that we extend our sympathy to you and your family on the loss of your mom. And certainly at the end of the service, we will be praying for you. God bless you. God bless you. You know, it's beautiful to have a church family especially in times of sorrow and grief, that we can really rally around each other. And I don't want us to ever miss an opportunity to support each other, especially in a time of grief. God bless you. But David uh, lost his brother, and I know next week there'll be, this Saturday, this Saturday they'll be celebrating his homegoing service. A Christian, a man of God, and we're glad for those things. Amen. I appreciate uh, Bishop Benjamin, who fills in for me when I'm not here. God of mercy, what would we do without that? <laughs> what, what would I uh, be able to do without him and his wife and their help? I certainly appreciate it. Minister Walters also, I appreciate him. Amen. I, I appreciate Brother F Minister Ferguson, Minister Turpin, all of the ministers that minister. Amen. Ebenezer is blessed. And you are almost at the point where you say, oh, we don't need Pastor Sobrian anymore. <laughs> almost. <laughs> and, you know, I've always said to Sister Danessa that her gift and her talent is worship and ministry. What a powerful ministry this morning. <laughs> I am telling you. God is good. Never, ever, ever lose an opportunity to use your gift for God. Never, never lose an opportunity. God bless you. 
God bless you sincerely and your children and your family. Praise the Lord. It's time for us to worship God in our giving. And you know, I remember this. I don't want to preach a sermon on giving because by now you know, we all know, we have to pay our tithes. We have to give our offerings. It's part of our Christian responsibility. This is what Christians do. Amen? So don't let me preach a sermon. The sermon is coming later. But I do want to say to you that I remember the time when the Pharisees came to Jesus, and they wanted to trick him. So they came to him, and they says, Tell me, Master, is it lawful to pay tribute to Caesar or not? Should I give money to Caesar? And Caesar was taxing the people heavily. So Jesus said, give me a penny, give me a coin. And they give him a coin. I thought that was really strange, that Jesus didn't have a coin of his own. He said, give me a penny. So they give him a penny, and he, he, give, he says, Who's, whose picture is this? Whose inscription is this? And they said, it's Caesar. So he said, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give to God what belongs to God. That's all I ask you today. You and I both know what will happen if we don't give to Caesar. We don't have to go through that. But I want, you to, I want to tell you what will happen if you give to God. What will happen? And you know what will happen? God says, I will open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive it. How many know that is true today? Bow your hearts and let me pray for you. Father, I thank you, I worship you, I praise you, and I honor you, and I bless your name today, for you are a good and love and kind and merciful God. Bless the offering and the tithe that we bring before you, and I pray that you will use it for the furtherance of your work here on earth. We glorify and magnify your name, for you are a wonderful God. Thank you for those who worship you with the tithes and the offerings, and may you abundantly bless them today, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Our ushers are coming. There are many different platforms to give today. You can give via PayPal. You can give via Cash App. You can give via Zelle. Or if you are in church, you can give in the good old-fashioned way. May God bless you and thank you for your giving. from my heart praise and thanks unto you Lord all the things that you have done I'm grateful for your love I'll give you the praise it is coming from my heart praise and thanks unto you Lord for all the things that you have done I'm grateful for your love I'll give you the praise from my heart. It is coming from my heart. Praise and thanks unto you, Lord. All the things that you have done, I'm grateful for your love. I'll give you the praise. I'm coming. Let's say, I just can't keep it to myself. It is coming from my heart Praise and thanks unto you, Lord All the things that you have done I'm grateful for your love I give you the praise It is coming It is coming from my heart Praise and thanks unto you, Lord All the things that you have done I'm grateful for your love I give you the praise. I'm counting. I'm counting my blessings. I just can't keep it to myself. When I thought that he had died.
done too much Whoa, Jesus did it again I'm counting my, I'm counting my blessings I just can't keep it to myself When I thought that he had done too much Whoa, Jesus did it again I'm counting my blessings I'm counting my blessings I just can't keep it to myself When I thought that he had done too much Whoa, Jesus did it again I can't tell you enough I can't tell you enough Oh, I can shout it loud On the mountain top I can't tell you enough Oh, I can shout it loud From the mountain top I can't tell you enough oh, I can shout it loud From the mountain I'm counting, I'm counting my blessings I just can't keep it to myself When I thought that you had done too much Oh, Jesus did it again I'm counting my blessings I'm counting my blessings I just can't keep it. I just can't keep it to myself. When I thought, when I thought that he had done too much, oh, Jesus did it again. I can't tell you. I can't tell you enough. Oh, I can shout it loud from the mountain top. I can't tell you enough. Oh. I can shout it loud from the mountain top. I'm counting, I'm counting my blessings. I just can't keep it to myself. When I thought that he had done too much, oh, Jesus did it again. I'm counting my blessings. I'm counting my blessings. I just can't keep it to myself. When I thought that he has done too much, oh, oh, Jesus did it again. I'm counting my blessings. I'm counting my blessings. Just can't keep, I just can't keep it to myself. When I thought that he had done, when I thought that he had done too much, oh, oh Jesus did it again. I'm counting my blessings. I'm counting my blessings. I just can't keep it to myself When I thought that he has done too much Oh, oh Jesus did it again I dance and praise the Lord 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 Sing I dance Jesus did it again. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I heard somebody said something to, um, just yesterday today that the fight is fixed. The fight is fixed. If Jesus is fighting for you, 
the fight is fixed because he cannot lose <laughs> he cannot lose amen so when we think he's done too much what happened he did it again hallelujah right now our ebenezer ensemble will be coming to us with a rendition and right after that receive bishop oliver sobrian with the word amen yes. can we bless the lord this morning hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. Our God is awesome. He's great and greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. We just came by this morning to encourage somebody. We've been through some tough times, but we know our God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we may ask or think. So this morning we want to encourage you with the song to ride out your storm. For God is there with you. Hallelujah. You've been in the storm Seems like forever Life's out confusion Has been so long Your ship, your ship has lost anchor You can ride out your storm. You've been in the storm. You've been in the storm. Seems like forever. Seems like forever. Life's all confusion. Jesus and ride out your storm 
you god bless you sister pauline and the ebenezer ensemble that song is dedicated especially to all those who are grieving today this is karen god bless you in the time of your grief sister yvonne wilson is grieving for a sister i believe who is who has just passed away in london god bless you brother winter has lost his nephew and is grieving over that as well. So God bless you all for, for really being in church today. Of course, Sister India, who is also grieving for her mom. All those that have lost loved ones, we want to dedicate that song to you today. Ride out your storm. God is there with you. Amen. God is there with you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look, today is the last day of the fall feast fall feast the fall feast in israel they had three different feasts in the fall season and it marks this one is the last of the three and it marks the end of the harvest and a grand celebration today they are celebrating the feast of tabernacles it's also called the feast of ingathering 
It's also called the Sukkot Feast, or it's also called the Feast of Boots or Tent. During this time, for seven days, the children of Israel are asked to leave their houses and build little tents or boots made out of palm branches and other things and live in them for this period of time. Now, you know, for most of our Jews who are very, very wealthy, they live in nice, fancy homes. But during this time, they are happy. They are very happy to leave and dwell in these tents because God commanded them in the book of Leviticus chapter 16 that they should build boots and live in them so that they would remember as they traveled through the wilderness for 40 years how they dwell in tents. And today God has blessed them. The Lord says, as you enter into the promised land, now you're going to build your own houses. You will have one place to live. The Lord says, you will move no more. I will establish you and give you a place of your own. So in memory, you know, when we have a place of our own, we should not forget where we came from. Isn't that right? So today is all about remembering where God brought us from. Now, I know, I can, you know, I know for myself and my wife, I can say, we came from a long way. You know, I, I took, it took a lot of courage for me to tell you that there were three times in my life that I was homeless. So every time I open that door and go inside the home where I live right now, I am so grateful. Listen, if you ever go to our home, you will see there's a picture on the wall over the fireplace resembling a house that we used to live in when we did have a home. It was not elaborate. Fancy. So I always have that there, and whenever I look at it, it reminds me of where I came from. Hmm? I never want to forget that. So today, I want you to tune your mind to celebrate where you are and remember where you came from. Amen? That's the purpose of the Feast of Boots, or the Feast of Tabernacles. It is one of the three feasts in Israel where every male had to go to Jerusalem to celebrate this feast. They could not celebrate where they are. They had to literally go. All right, so bow your hearts and pray with me. Father, I thank you today, and I bless you, and I honor you, and I worship you for this grand and glorious day that you have made. We celebrate today the Feast of Tabernacles not as the Jews would with building of boots, but we celebrate spiritually with thanksgiving for what you have done for us, where you brought us from, and the journey we went through to arrive where we are. We are indeed very grateful to you, O oh God. And we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The Feast of Trumpets. Feast of Trumpets. That's the title of my message today. The Feast of Trumpets. Now, I, will, I kind of recap with you real quickly what went on. Now, this is, this is Sunday. Last Sunday was Yom Kippur. The Sunday before that was, who remember? Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets. All right, that was the beginning, Rosh Hashanah. And then last Sunday was Yom Kippur. And today is the Feast of Tabernacles. This is the end of three feasts. Now, so let me revise quickly because they're all connected. Is that right? And I want you to think about what God is saying to his people by giving them these three feasts. And why was there a trumpet? And I'm glad we have Sister Anna and Sister Virginia today. They're going to help us. And Brother Dean is somewhere with his trumpet as well. So listen, every time you see a picture on the wall with a trumpet, I want you to blow it for me. And when we come to the feast of Yom Kippur, the trumpet is blown in a special way. It's a long, terrible, loud blast, all right? And then when we come to the Feast of the Resurrection, then, all right, I'll let you know. So let's go. The Feast of Trumpets. There are four different trumpets I will talk about today. Four different trumpets. And as we begin, just let us have a blast of the trumpet so we can begin today the Feast of Trumpets. Amen? There we go. 
Go right ahead. Wow, wow. It's amazing. Wonderful. Thank you so much. The trumpet was used to call the people of God together. Pradeen, you're doing a great job, my friend. Yeah, yes, yes. All of these ladies as well. Thank God for you. Now listen, we are selling. It is important to have this today because that is what used to happen in Israel. Now, my, our problem, our, our, our quest is this. We are not celebrating... The, the Old Testament feast, as they did. But there was a reason for that Old Testament feast. Okay? So I want you and I to discover what is the reason. What was the reason for the trumpet of sanctification? Rosh Hashanah. God said you, he, the people should blow the trumpet. you remember what the Bible says? God gave them special instruction in Leviticus 23, 23. Now, we're going to go back over all the scriptures. But I want to, I want to remind you of, uh, of what's the reason for this. Like back in the Old Testament, remember in the book of Joel, chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, blow the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord is coming. The day of the Lord is at hand. That is a call to repentance. When Joel went on to say, let the priests and the elders weep between the porch and the altar. Let the bridegroom go out of his chamber. Even the babies that nurse, let, it, let them not, let them fast. It was a solemn assembly. It was a very serious call to all of Israel to recognize the fact that they have walked away from God. There is sin in their life and they should come back to him. Amen? That's how this whole thing begins. It begins with Rosh Hashanah, a call to sanctification. And then they will take 10 days to examine themselves. They will take 10 days to repent. They will take 10 days to say, Lord, I am sorry, and to cleanse themselves in preparation of what is to come. After the feast of Rosh Hashanah, then the trumpet blows again. The trumpet of salvation. Amen? The trumpet of salvation. Hallelujah. The trumpet of salvation. Now, what is this? This is, if you look at the trumpet of salvation, you see it talks about Yom Kippur. When we receive the payment for our, our salvation, when the Lord Jesus Christ paid the price for our sins, and the Lord received that price and set us free. So, Yom Kippur represents a time when the high priest went into the most holy place and offered a sacrifice for our sin. That happened last Sunday. Amen? So I didn't get a chance to tell you about Yom Kippur. So I'm glad I'm here today. I'm glad I can tell you. It, it, is, it is signified by the blowing of the shofar. Shofar simply means a bull's horn or a horn. It, it signifies the Day of Atonement. In the Jewish calendar, it is the tenth day of the seventh month. The tenth day of the seventh month, which is the month Tishri, and that's the month in which they are in today. Okay? So, the blowing of the shofar. Why is there an atonement? The word atonement means covering, where God cover our sins. Now, the blood of bullocks and turtle doves could not wash our sins away. All it could do was to cover it. You see? to cover it up. It is still there, but God does not see it anymore. He sees the blood of his son. Amen? So the sin is covered, and, and, the, and the children of Israel are now waiting for the real sacrifice, the sacrifice of the lamb that will wash away their sins. Now, back in the Old Testament, there was, anytime there was a, a, fi a festival or a feast of Yom Kippur, several things happened. I'll tell you real quickly. Number one, the priest would, let, let's look at the high priest there, the garments of the high priest. Now, the priest would have on his glorious garment, and that's how he would begin. And then he will take off those garments after he sacrificed the animals. The animals, animals are sacrificed with that, with that religious garment that the priest wears. It's called the ephod and the breastplate of righteousness and all the other parts of his garments. But... He will, he will have those garments are in the beginning, and then 
As he's about to go into the Holy of Holies, he changes to the garment on your right, which is pure white, the pure white. And, and then he goes into the Holy of Holies with that. Now, uh, let me just say this very quickly, what happens as he goes into the Holy of Holies. Here's how it's done. He goes in there three times. Number one, he goes first into the Holy of Holies with the censer, the golden censer, and hot coals from the fire of the altar that is outside. You see? That altar burns on the outside for the sacrifice of animals, and that fire also burns on the altar of incense. So he takes a fire from the altar of incense, which came from the altar of sacrifice, and he goes into the most holy place, and that is the correct name for it, the most holy place. We call it the holy of holies, same thing. But he goes into the most holy place, and he goes bowing. He doesn't look up. He goes bowing with the incense in one hand and the fire in the other, and when he gets inside of the most holy place, right before the ark, he put the incense on the fire and smoke fills that room beautiful aroma of incense burning and they were told to make that incense in a specific way and they were also told not to make it for themselves that was only supposed to be for God so imagine now this little room with the ark of the covenant it is filled with the smoke of the incense which represents the prayers of the saints and then with his head bowed not turning around, but moving back, he leaves the Holy of Holies. And then now, he takes the blood of a bullock that was sacrificed while he had on his ceremonial garments. You see? He takes the blood of the bullock. There is a young bullock that is the sacrifice of the high priest and all the other priests. So he takes the blood of the bullock that was sacrificed for him and for the other priests, and he goes back. He goes back into the Holy of Holies and he sprinkles that seven times on what we call the mercy seat, which is the covering of the Ark of the Covenant, the, co the, the cover, the top cover. So the Ark of the Covenant has two parts. You have the chest, the golden chest made of acacia wood overlaid with gold. And on top of that, the cover is beautiful. It's made of a solid piece of gold, no wood. And it has the two cherubims facing each other. And that's the place where the glory of God comes down. So he sprinkles the blood there for himself. And then he goes back again. And he takes the blood of the goat. You see, there were two goats. One year old in the first year. That was brought before him earlier. And they, they cast lots to see which goat will represent the Lord. And which goat will represent the scapegoat. And the scapegoat, they lay their hands upon him and pronounce all of their sins, the sins of all the people on the scapegoat. And after this is over, the last thing that they do, a, a strong man, a healthy, strong man who can walk for a long distance, he takes that scapegoat and take him as far as he could and leave him in the wilderness. And he will never come back. He will just die in the wilderness. But the other goat that represents the Lord... The, the priest would lay his hand upon him and pronounce the sins of all the people. And then they would kill that goat, take the blood, and now the high priest goes back into the Holy of Holies for the third time. And he takes the blood that represents the Lord. You know which Lord that is, isn't that right? And he sprinkles it on the, whole, on the chest, on the mercy seat, Seven times as well. So he goes into the Holy of Holies three times. Then he comes back out, and then, you know, that's the time when they, they, they lead that scapegoat into the wilderness. Now, that happens on the day of Yom Kippur. It happened on the day of Yom Kippur. And tradition tells us that as they tie a ribbon around the, the horns of that scapegoat, when the high priest comes out of the most holy place, if God has accepted their forgiveness and their sacrifice, that red ribbon automatically turns white. That's what Jewish tradition says. It's not in the scriptures, but that's what the tradition tells us. Okay, now, 
When did Jesus enter the most holy place? What does this have to do with us? That's the question today. What does it have to do? I want to share with you a scripture in the book of Hebrews. Here's what it says. Hebrews 9 and 12. Not with the blood of goats or calves, like the high priest did. Not with the blood of goats or calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place. That's the correct word used there. The most holy place. You see that? He entered the most holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. Now, let's reason. Reason with me here. Paul tells us, and I believe Paul wrote Hebrews. <laughs> Paul tells us here that Jesus entered into the most holy place once and for all with his own blood to purchase our redemption. Now, can anybody tell me where that was in Scripture? I don't see nowhere in Scripture where that is. So where did Paul come up with that? Well, I'm glad you asked. If you give me a few minutes, I'll tell you. One interpretation, and this is not what I believe. I'm just giving you what people say. Matthew 27, verse 50. Here's what it says. When Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up the spirit. The spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. From the top to the bottom, the earth shook and the rocks split. So some folks are saying, when that happened and the curtain was torn, that's the time when Jesus entered into the most holy place because that's the time of his death. You see? Brother David was giving me a different interpretation this morning. Somebody, you know, he's, he's, he, uh, he did some research on this. And there are many different interpretations out there. One, one person said uh, that, you know, when, when Jesus died, the rock split and some of his blood went down in the earth in the splitting of the rock. And then under the earth, there was the Ark of the Covenant and then his blood touched the Ark of the Covenant, and that's how his blood went into the Holy of Holies. Now, you have to really stretch your imagination to accept that. <laughs> number one, we don't know whether the Ark of the Covenant was under the earth. And number two, that was not the Holy of Holies. And I, you know, I don't want to go into an argument of that. I want to tell you what I think. Now, listen, what I, you tell me if this is plausible or not. Are you there? Are you there with me? Say amen. Come on. All right, let me tell you what I believe happened. Now, I believe that when the curtain was ripped in two, it was not ripped for Jesus to go through. Because Jesus, we found out that he didn't need even the doors to open. He can walk through the walls and come in after his death. Isn't that right? So I believe when that curtain was ripped, it was ripped for us. As a symbol saying, as Paul says, now we can come boldly, boldly, Paris, boldly to the throne of grace and make our petitions known. Amen? So that was symbolic for our position. We don't need the blood of bullocks and turtle doves anymore. We can come boldly. Are you there with me? So when did Jesus really go into the most holy place? Look. When Jesus died, the Ark of the Covenant was not in the temple. You know, the temple was there. There was a most holy place, but it was empty. And I don't believe that the high priest, they did the sacrifices, but they, there was no Ark in the most holy place for, for, for the high priest to go and perform that sacrifice. There was no Ark. And we know that for three for a fact, because the Ark of the Covenant was last seen in, the, in, in, in about 600 years, 500 plus years before Christ. About 2,600 years before Christ, that's the last time the Ark was seen. So that Holy of Holies was empty during that time. Here is a picture of the Holies of Holies with the Ark of the Covenant in it. And you can take a look and see uh, what it looked like with, with the Ark of the Covenant. Help me here, Sister Pauline. The Ark of the Covenant with, with, the, with the Spirit of God coming out. That's what it looks like. In the days of Jesus, that was not there. Okay? So he was not talking about that. And if Jesus went into the Holy of Holies during his time on earth... We have mentioned in the scriptures, the number one reason that he did not do it while he was alive is because he could not, he dare not enter into the Holy of Holies. He was not the high priest at that time. He, I tell you, he became the high priest 
at a point in time in his life, and we'll talk about that in a little later. In fact, I'll tell you now. You remember when Caiaphas was questioning him? Caiaphas is questioning Jesus is standing there. Caiaphas is questioning him, and they want to know whether he's the Messiah, and he's not answering. So Caiaphas stood up and said, I adjure thee by the Most High God that you tell me, are you the Christ? And Jesus said, you said it. <laughs> exactly what you said. And he got so mad and so upset, he stood up and put his hand to his ephod, and he just ripped it. The Lord told them specifically in the Old Testament, do not rip your ephod. Don't tear it. Rend your heart and not your garments. Not render, you know. Rend. <laughs> tear your heart. Don't tear your garments. That's what he was talking about. So when the high priest did that, when he tore his ephod, he automatically disqualified himself from being the high priest. And at that moment, the office of the high priest was transferred to the man standing before him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen? So now he's qualified to go into the Holy of Holies. Hallelujah. And he's going tonight. Look, let's take a look at the layout of the tabernacle here for a minute. You see that? Now, let's look at the... Oh, my. Minister Walters is changing our, our projector this week. And I, I need some men to help him get that done. <laughs> yes. Anyway, the outer court, the outer court, there's an outer court with the, can you turn off all the lights for me, please? We'll be able to use the camera as well. Yeah, let's see if you can get this a little better. All right, there's the outer court where we have the brazen altar and where we also have the laver. No, that doesn't help, does it? <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Let's go, let's go. Okay. So, and then we have, there are three parts. And then we have the holy place, where there are three types of furniture. The table of showbread, the menorah, and the golden altar, right? The menorah or the golden candlestick, as they call it, lampstand. And then there is a third place that we call the most holy place. Are you seeing that? Where the Ark of the Covenant is now. The Bible says Jesus entered into the most holy place once and for all with his blood. Here is what I believe happened. Number one, Mark 14, verse 32. It says, then, then they came to a place which is named Gethsemane. Gethsemane? In the Greek, which means a press, a pressing where it was an olive press, where they press the olive berries to make olive oil. And that's where he was pressed, and that's where he struggled in the garden. Now, when they came, they meaning Jesus and the disciples, to get Shemini or get Shemini, he said to his disciples, sit here while I pray. So they come to the first place, and he said to them, you wait here. And then he does something else. That's the outer court. He leaves them in the outer court. All right? Now let's go to the next slide here. Then, then he took Peter, James, and John and began to be troubled and deeply distressed. So he leaves the disciples here in the outer court and he takes Peter, James, and John and he goes into the holy place. Spiritually, symbolically. And he leaves Peter and John there and he says, you stay here and watch. He said, you stay here and pray. You stay here and watch. And then he does something else. Watch this. I don't know if you ever noticed this. Verse 35. And he went a little further. You see what's going on here? He leaves the disciples here in the outer court. He leaves Peter, James, and John in the holy place and he goes to a place where they could not go. He goes to the place by himself, which I believe is the outer court, because watch what happens there. Something remarkable is happening. Jesus is by himself, all right? And he fell down, fell on the ground, and prayed 
that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Anguish and pain and struggle, remembering and knowing what's going to happen to him tomorrow, literally overwhelmed him that he said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Verse 36, he said it right. Here's what he says. And he said, Abba, Father. He uses the word Abba. It's an Aramaic word. It means Father. But it doesn't only mean Father. It means Father with the authority. It means you have authority over me. That's what Abba means. You have authority over me. It also means that I am going to be obedient to you, Father. You know, if a Jewish dad, father, says to his son or his daughter, please call me Abba. <laughs> Make sure you call me Abba. All the Jewish kids have to refer to their father as Abba. That means I am obedient. I'm going to be obedient to you. I'm going to be, I'm going to be submissive to you. But it means something else. For the father, it means that he has a responsibility to be close to his son. It's a, it's a word that describes intimacy between the father and the son that can never ex, ex, be explained. Close intimacy. So when the Lord says, Abba, Father, he was saying, my father who is here. My father who is so close to me, who is so dear to me, that is right here now, and I can see, like in my mind, I can see Jesus holding on spiritually to the garment of his dad, his father, and saying, Father, help me. If it is possible, let this cup pass to me. The anguish and the pain was so much. And watch Luke records this. Here's what Luke says in Luke 22, verse 3. And an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And watch what's happening here now. Then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling to the ground. Are you seeing what's happening here? He is there in a place by himself, intimate with his dad. His father is in him, and he is in the father. At this moment, they are one. And he calls him Abba Father. Whenever that word is used, it is used to describe the greatness of intimacy between a father and a son, or father and a daughter. And at that moment, never before this has ever happened, he is praying, and what's happening to his body? His body the, the veins in his skin has ruptured. And the blood, you know, it's not like, like when you perspire, there's perspiration over your body. It, that, that's not what's happening here. Luke says the perspiration is coming out like great drops of blood. And it's falling. Can you get the picture? There's blood flowing from his face, from his hands, from his body, from his feet. It's just pouring out. Why was that necessary? Why was that necessary? Because that was the most holy place. And the father was there. And he gave his blood. That's where he gave his blood. The next day he gave his life. But that's where the blood was offered once and for all. Amen. The disciples couldn't go there. They could not follow him there. Could not follow him. And I believe that's when the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ was offered for the sins of the world. If you want a good place to say thank you, Jesus, that's a place right there. And how many times did he do this? Well, let's check. Let's check. Look at the next verse, verse 41. Then he came the third time and said to them, are you still sleeping? So he went back and forth. How many times? <laughs> How many times did the high priest go back and forth in the Holy of Holies? How many times? Come on. You can, you can talk to me. How many times the high priest went back and forth? How many times did Jesus go back and forth in the same place? Do you think it had any connection? Yes. Why the disciples couldn't go there with him? Because Abba Father was there. 
Hallelujah. Because that was a holy place. They could not go. They couldn't follow him there. He said, where I'm going, you can't follow me. That's what he was talking about. Amen. I am glad he did that. I am glad he went on. I am glad he gave his blood for your sins and mine. Let us give him some praise today. Let us glorify him. Amen. That is what the atonement means. Amen. Give God some praise today. Hallelujah. Yes. Man. So we have the trumpet of Rosh Hashanah, which is the trumpet of assembly, calling together to sanctify your life and sanctify your body. And then we have the trumpet that we just talked about here of Yom Kippur. Where now the blood of Jesus cleanses us from our sin. Now, listen to me carefully. There is a pattern going on here. Follow me, right? If you, if you answer a call to sanctification and you ask God to forgive you for your sins, okay, it means that when Yom Kippur comes along, guess what happened? The blood of Jesus is shed and you already ask and you're already asking, what's going to happen in Yom Kippur? Are your sins going to be forgiven? Yes, Yom Kippur, Yom Kippur says that Jesus gave his blood once and for all. Once and for all. And there's no more any need for the blood of bullocks and turtle doves. Tradition tells us that 40 years before the temple was destroyed, 40 years, that red ribbon tied around the goat's head did not change from red to white anymore. They, they didn't understand why. Well, what happens 40 years before the temple was destroyed? Jesus was killed on the cross. So when Jesus died on the cross, there was no more need for that tradition anymore. Amen? The price is already paid. It was done. Can you say Amen. So hear me now, if you answer the call for sanctification, and if you answer the call of salvation, that you are saved, let me see if you're saved and you know it, say amen. If you're saved and you know it, say amen. The trumpet will sound again. Hallelujah. The trumpet will sound again. Brother Dean, Sister Anna, Sister Victoria, God bless you. Hear me. The trumpet will sound again. When is that? When this trumpet will sound again? Now, you did the two things, right? right? You, give your, you, you give your heart to the Lord. Isn't that right? You repent. You repent. You give your heart to the Lord. Now you are saved. And you said amen just now, right? If you didn't say amen, the next trumpet is not for you. The next trumpet is not for you. What is that next trumpet? The next trumpet is to awaken the dead and quicken the living. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. To awaken the dead. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16. The trumpet of salvation. Here's what it says. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet of God. Hallelujah. Amen. There's going to come a day when that trumpet of God will sound again, loud and powerful. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 And listen to me, if you answer the first two trumpets, even though you are dead and in the grave, and your bones are dry, you will still hear. You will still hear. Hallelujah. You will still hear that next trumpet. Hallelujah. Listen, that one, the Jews kind of stop at the first two. They don't celebrate this one. Yet, they are hoping that they will celebrate after the Messiah comes. But you, now you and I will take over the celebration here. Isn't that right? So now we are looking forward to the third trumpet. Hallelujah. 
For Paul said the trumpet of God shall sound, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then who which are then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus shall we always be with the Lord. Give God some praise if you are looking forward to that trumpet. Brethren, listen to me. Don't miss that trumpet. <laughs> Don't miss that call. It's a loud call that will resonate throughout all the earth, penetrating our very souls. If you reach so far down into the bottom of the sea, if you reach down into the earth, wherever the dead in Christ is, and it will wake them up. Hallelujah. It will wake them up, and we will rise to the sound of the trumpet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, what's really going to happen? He's coming during that rapture trumpet to quicken the living, quicken the living, and to raise the dead. He's going to raise the dead. The dead will be raised. But those of us who are alive, and many of you here, we are all hoping to be alive when the Lord comes, don't you? All is, you're looking forward to the Lord to come during your lifetime? I am. Romans 8 verse 11 says, But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Now, you know, sometimes we Pentecostals have a different meaning of the word quicken. And I want to tell you what it is. Let's look at the New King's James Version. Let's read that. He says, but if the spirit of him who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised up Christ from the dead will also give life. See? What does the word quicken mean? To give life. Now, why do we need life if you already have life? It don't make sense. Because I'm alive, right? I'm not dead. I'm talking about those of you who are alive when the Lord comes. Why do you need life when you already are alive? He's talking about a different kind of life. <laughs> Amen? A different kind of life. For this mortal shall put on immortality. And this corruption shall put on incorruption. Amen? And we shall be changed. Come on. You believe that? Yes! We shall be changed. No more flesh and blood. No more aches and pains. No more heartaches. No more trouble. All the former things are passed away. Amen. I'm looking forward to that time when I will have a brand new body. No more arthritis. No more pain. No more suffering. Come on. Whatever you have today, let's trust God and believe God. There is coming a time. There is coming a day. You don't have to go to the doctor anymore. You don't have to drink any tablets, any medicine. You nurses, I thank God for you. You are doing a good job, but all of you are going to get fired. Yeah, we got to fire you. There'll be no need for nurses, no need for doctors. Kaiser is going to go bankrupt. Thank God. How many can say, I can't wait. I can't wait for a brand new body, a brand new life. God says he's coming to quicken us, to give us life and life more abundantly. Give God some praise if you believe that right now. So we have three trumpets. The third one is the trumpet of resurrection. You know, there's an old song we used to sing back in the day. I didn't hear them sing it now. I wish we could sing it at the end. It says, when the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be no more. When the, when the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair. When the save of earth shall gather over on the other shore. When the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Come on. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. When the roll is called up yonder. I will be there. How many 
really plan to be there today. Amen. On that bright and cloudless morning, when the dead in Christ shall rise, and the glory of his resurrection share, when his chosen one shall gather to their home beyond the sky, when the roll is called up yonder, I will be there. Amen. What are we going to do today? Let us labor for the master from the dawn to setting sun. Let us talk about his wondrous love and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, when the roll is called up yonder, I will be there. Give God some praise with me. Worship him. Glorify him. Hear me. All of that begins with the sound of the trumpet. Is that blast of the trumpet. Can I ask you, when the trumpet sound, will you be there? When the trumpet sound, will you be there? Hear me. You will not be there if you didn't answer the call for Rosh Hashanah. If you didn't answer the call for sanctification. If you didn't take that time to repent of your sins, saying, Lord, forgive me. The Jews had 10 days, all was repenting. The, you will not be there if you do not accept the blood of Jesus Christ as he went into the Holy of Holies and shed his very blood. Great drops of blood falling down and the Father is right there and the angel is right there and he gave his precious blood for your sins and mine. Paul says, how will we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? I'm saying, if you have not given your heart to the Lord, and you reject what Christ did for you, you are in trouble. This trumpet will not sound for you. I, I don't know of a different way of saying it. If you check how this thing is, they're all connected to each other. Amen? So it brings us to the last trumpet now. The last trumpet. First of all, we had a trumpet. Let's, let's, let's recap the trumpets here quickly. The trumpet... And every time I call it, I want you to blow. Amen. First of all, the trumpet of sanctification. The trumpet of salvation. The trumpet of the resurrection. A powerful trumpet. All right. Now, the last trumpet. The last trumpet. There's one more trumpet. One more trumpet. This trumpet is not sound on earth. This trumpet is sound in heaven. And it is the trumpet that celebrates today. Sukkot, Feast of Tabernacles, Feast of Shelter, Feast of Boots. Let me just take a minute and explain to you what, what's going on today. All right? What's going on today? It's called the Feast of Boots. Feast of Th the Lord says, when you leave the wilderness and you go into the promised land, you've been 40 years out there, no home of your own. When you go into the promised land, now you have a home. Build these tents still. Build these boots and live in them for seven days. So you remember. Remember what I did for you out there. Amen. And not only that, this was one time when the Jews, no matter where they were living in the world, they had to go to Jerusalem. It's one of the three pilgrim feasts. You had the Feast of Passover, the Feast of Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacles. They had to go. So, in that feast, and I give you, a script, I give you the scriptures here. Those of you who get my sermon via email, I, I put this in here so you can look up the references. But we can't deal with all of them today. It's mentioned in the book of Leviticus. It's mentioned in the book of Exodus. It's mentioned in Deuteronomy and Nehemiah and Ezra and Numbers. Uh, a lot of places where this scripture is mentioned. Now, this, this, this is a picture here of, what, of some of the boots that they have today in Israel. You see that? that that's, a, that's a temporary shelter where the Jews move there for, for seven days. That's one of them. And now they are very... This, this next one, they're very ingenious and in decorating it nice and all fancy and thing. And this is what, this is what it like. God says, during this time, you have to do that. Now, I think what we can get from that is this, during this time, we should take some time to reflect upon where God brought us from. Has God done some good things for you? Can we just pause for a minute and really thank God? 
Look what the Lord has done. Look where he brought you from and where you are today. Look how he has blessed you and prospered your life. Amen. Can we have a heart of gratitude today? That's the purpose for it. No, this feast is a big celebration feast. They move on from a nice fancy home and they're living in these tents and these boots, but they're really happy and really celebrating because of all the Lord has done for them. There are several things that happen during this feast. And I'll just go through it quickly. We'll come to the end here in a minute. During this feast, which lasts for seven days, they carry little torches and they walk around the temple and have these torches to light up the outside of the temple. And, and also they carry water from the pool of Shiloh into the, into the temple and they pour it in a silver basin as well. So they're walking around the temple having these lights because the Bible says the Messiah is going to be a light to the Gentiles. That's what they're celebrating, right? And then they have this little water and they bring it and they pour it in the silver basin and they're saying by doing that, they're asking God to send rain to bless their crops for the next year. You know, this is the end of the harvest. God has blessed their crops during this year and they bring this water to celebrate that. Now, what did Jesus, Jesus went to one of these feasts, you know, And here's what he says in John chapter 7, verse 37, 38. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whosoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water shall flow from within him. The Lord says, you're carrying water up there to ask for rain, but I am the living water. Amen? Then again, he says to them in John 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. As you march around the temple with your torches to light up the temple, remember, I am the light of the world. And by saying, I am the light of the world, he was really saying, I am the Messiah that you're hoping would come to be a light to the Gentiles. So that's the connection between Jesus and the Feast of the Tabernacles. Now, this Feast of the Tabernacles is pointing... It's like what Adolf Harnack says. It's an Old Testament and a New Testament and a future. It is the already, the present, and the not yet. Okay. The already means God brought you out of the wilderness, and now he has given you a home of your own. Let me see all those who, who slept outside last night. Say that again. We are blessed. Come on, can we say that? We are blessed. So let us celebrate this feast with thanksgiving in our heart. So here's what, so here's what the Lord is saying. You, what happened in the wilderness now is not happening in you. have your nice homes. But it's also pointing to what's going to happen in the future. And there's a last trumpet. Everybody say last trumpet. Now Jesus spoke about this trumpet in the book of Matthew 24 and verse 31. Here's what Jesus says. He says, and he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Not the ordinary sound, but a great sound of the trumpet. And will gather together his elect. But where? Where? Watch where. From the four winds, from one end of heaven. See that? To another. So this last trumpet that is going to sound is sounding in heaven. That means you guys are already there. But I know what's going to happen when you go. I know. Hmm? I like Keisha. She, she's gone looking for her friends, you know. <laughs> yeah. She, she's gone looking for her friends and her buddy. I know me. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look for you. <laughs> I, I am going to look for my mom. I'm telling you right now. I, don't tell me you're not going to go look for your people to see if they're up there. I'm going to look for my mom. I'm going to look for my other relatives and so on, those that have died. I'm going to look for Mother Fisher. And she don't have to make carrot juice for me anymore because there's going to be a whole lot of good stuff up there. But I'm going to go and look. And we'll be all excited and go, you know, doing our own thing. And there are, you know, you're so excited and happy. And you're there, here, there, and everywhere. And Lord said, listen, I want you to come together. So this trumpet that Matthew wrote about, Jesus spoke about, it is happening in the book of Revelation. Revelation 11:15. Let's see what it says here. 
Then the seventh angel sounded. That's the last trumpet. Everybody say last trumpet. The seventh angel sounded, and there was loud voices in heaven. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet. That's a trumpet was blowing, right? The angel blew seven trumpets. Now, the seventh trumpet is sounding. And then the loud voice in heaven saying, the kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever and ever. Amen. Now, listen, in heaven, there is a last trumpet. I want you to stand for me quickly in front there. Not everybody, just a few folks in front. And I want you to sound that last trumpet for a minute. And as they sound it, I want you to imagine that you are in heaven, minding your own business, going everywhere, greeting your friends. And when you hear this trumpet, it's time to get together. Hallelujah. It's time to congregate. Let us hear it today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There are seven trumpets mentioned in the book of Revelation, and this is the seventh trumpet. God is calling his people together. Now, imagine here with me. Go with me here. You're all in heaven now, all right? You're happy you're there. You're excited. You're eating from the tree of life. And you're drinking water from the river that flows from the throne of God. And you're enjoying this nice mansion that God has given to you. And then you hear the trumpet. And the Bible says there were loud voices. You know, you know what's going on? You know who those loud voices are? The Pentecostal people. Yeah. You, you are too loud. You preach loud. You sing loud. You play loud. But God, God did not forget the nominal, you know, the nominal people. They will get half an hour. There's half an hour of silence in heaven. But after the half an hour is over, hey, we taking over. Come on, don't wait. Don't wait until you get there. Hallelujah. Trumpet and loud voices, you loud mouth people. Tell me, here, tell me, if you, when you, not if, when you make it to heaven and you realize you're there. Come on. Hey, when you realize you're there. Who will have to pump you? To say praise the Lord. Who will have to pump you to say give God a praise? Don't wait. Don't wait until you get there. Let us start now. Give God a praise, everybody. Worship Him. Glorify Him. Magnify His name. He's a good God. He's loving and kind and gracious. Oh, come bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Magnify the Lord. Let us worship his name together. Hey, hear me, hear me. You know what's going on? You know what's going on here? You know what's going on here? Here, hear me what's going on. We suddenly realize that we are not worried anymore if the government shut down. We're not worried if we're going to get paid. We're not worried if all the soldiers are going to have to come back home and the enemy will come and take over our country because the government can't run their own country.
can't take care of their own business, they're down. We're not going to worry about the terrorists that are terrorizing people in the world. We're not going to worry about people like Vladimir Putin who would go into next man country and kill innocent people and they can't even do anything about it because he has atomic weapons. We're not going to worry about the dictators of this world. We're not going to worry about what's going on in southern Sudan right now where people are losing their lives like for nothing. We're not going to worry about the oppression in this world that are performed against the innocent out of a child abuse about the rape and murder of the innocent people in this world about the bullies of this world taking advantage with the people of God because the kingdoms of this world have now become the kingdom of our God the kingdom of our God one kingdom one king one heaven one people so give God some praise today Amy, Amy. That's where the story will end. It will end in heaven when, according to the Hebrew, Malkuta Shamayim means the kingdom has come. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God has come. God is now in charge and his son is the king of kings and lord of lords every knee shall bow every tongue shall confess of things in heaven of things on earth of things under the earth give god some praise today give him some praise Now hear me. Brethren, that's the reason why the Lord instituted these three feasts. You know, can you see how it flows to the last trumpet? Can you see that? I am asking you right now, we're going to close in prayer. I don't feel like closing, you know, but I'm closed now. Listen, I'm going to ask you, make sure before you leave this building today that you can sincerely say, I'm going to hear that last trumpet. I'm going to hear it. I have made up my mind. I'm going to hear that last trumpet. And if I can pray for you today, come on down to the altar. Come on down. What, regardless of what you need prayer for, just come and let's pray today. Come on. Those of you who are watching online, I want to pray for you also. That God will help you. That that last trumpet, the Malkuta Shamayim, will be real in your life. The kingdom of God will come to you. Hallelujah.
the skies and the road is called up yonder I'll be there when the road is called up yonder 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 today hallelujah hallelujah now brethren you know I'm listening to that trumpet and I you know I'm telling you man if the fear of God does not come into your heart you know I need to pray for you but I'm telling you that trumpet is gonna sound one day and I want to be able to hear it I want to be able to hear it I want to be able to hear it. I'm not going to ask a raising of hands. I'm just going to ask you today, if you knew, in your heart you know that you have not accepted Christ as your Savior, I want you to pray sincerely and do that today. Answer the first trumpet. Answer the first, and the second one is yours as well. So you can be a part of the third trumpet when the roll is called up yonder. And when you get up there, you will be a part of the fourth trumpet. And all the saints will gather together Hallelujah. at Eternity Square, standing in front of the throne of God, robes in white, gold, and slippers. And you will take your harp down from the willows and sit by the river that flows from the throne of God. And you will sing a song of redemption that will last throughout all eternity. God, you have been good to me. You have been good to me. Hallelujah. I want to ask today, as I pray, if you know you need this prayer, pray after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I come before you today, and I heard your word, and I know I need to be ready for the sound of that trumpet. And today, I ask you, please, to come into my heart. I ask you, please, to cleanse my life. I ask you, please, to save my soul that I will be ready when the trumpet sounds. Oh Lord, please forgive me and wash my sins away. I surrender my life to you. 
and I dedicate my all to you. I ask it in Jesus' name. Now let's give God praise today for those who pray that prayer. I want, to, I want to ask if you pray that prayer, let us know. Bishop Benjamin and the rest of his team are having young converts class, and they will have an opportunity to lead you in water baptism so you can prepare for the sound of that third trumpet. Hallelujah. 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 And now I know that there's many grief, there's many grieving today. Lots of grief in our church. Sister India, Sister Yvonne, Wilson, Brother Winter. Today I want, I want someone to just lay hands on these. And if there's anyone else that I have missed today who has been suffering in sadness, grieving in their heart for the loss of a loved one, put your arms around them if they're next to you. And let me say a prayer and you agree with me today as I pray. Father, I thank you right now for your promise in the book of John 20 where you said that you will send us the comforter, the Holy Spirit, who will comfort our hearts. Lord, we need him now. And I pray that those that grieve, Sister India, and Brother Winter, Sister Yvonne Wilson, and the others who may be grieving today for a loss of loved ones, Lord, that you will comfort their hearts and help them and strengthen them and bless them right now. Touch them and give them comfort and strength during this time of grief and sorrow. That they will sorrow with hope that one day the trumpet will sound for all of us and we will see each other again. I bless you and I thank you and I honor you and I worship you today. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen, amen. Thank you for being in church today. God bless you. Amen. I, I, I covet your prayers. This week, we are traveling to St. Martin for the annual territorial convention. Please remember to pray for Bishop Stan Holder and Dr. Teresa Holder. Bishop Charles, Ishmael Charles, and Lady Charles. Remember to pray for Bishop Mike McDormand and his wife as they are all going to be our ministers in that convention. God bless you. Thanks for your prayers. Those of us who are traveling there, Dr. Rose and myself, Sister Lambert, Sister Olive. Thank you for your prayers and the Lord bless you. Praise the Lord. What a word, what a word. He said, what a word. Praise God. Church, don't lose your hope. Keep your hope strong. Because we all want to go to that place that call heaven. I want to be there when the first trumpet sound. What a word this morning. God bless you, Pastor. We're going into a communion. We want to set our hearts at the place that God can really use us. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that the blood was shed for me. I'm so grateful that the blood was shed for me and I accept that blood of Jesus Christ. Before I go, I, I just want to pray right now. Just pray, pray for you as we go into this communion. Gracious God and our Heavenly Father, I thank you right now, Lord. 
as we are about to go before you, Lord, the first steps that you make, Lord, and show us before you go to the cross, Lord. You sit with your disciples, Lord, and you break bread with them. And Lord God, we come, Lord, and follow the example even today. We ask God that you will wash us now and you will cleanse us. I pray, God, you will forgive us of our sins, our transgressions, and our iniquities. That as we go to this table, Lord God, that, Lord, our hearts will at the right place, that we not eat nor drink unworthily. But, Father, the word says we should pray one for another, that we don't go in condemnation. Bless us now, Lord, as we are about to do what you want us to do. We ask all of it. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. You see, I, when I stand here, I have to lean a little bit because the strengths in my feet are weak. Father, I thank you for this communion. I pray, God, that as I hold it in my hand, I pray, God, you will bless it now as we partake. Sanctify it, Lord, and let it be a blessing each that partake even now with this cup that I hold in my hand. And you signify the body and the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. May we enjoy it, Lord God, with joy and peace, doing what we're supposed to do as you require us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
Lord, thank you, worship, praise and worship. We are so sorry to know that we didn't have as much for everyone, but I go and share minds with all that don't get any. We are sorry because we have a full house this morning, so we didn't expect that, I guess. The same night in which Christ was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. He said, this is my body, which was shed for you. As often as you eat and drink this cup, you are showing my dead until I come. May you eat and may you drink, please. Let's we meditate a little bit on what we have just done. It was the Last Supper. Today we get the message, Lord, when the Lord trumpet sound. And so God, the Bible said, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we are showing God's de death and he return. He's coming back, church. Father, I thank you this morning, Lord, as we come to your table. Lord, we see what you have done for us, that we can follow in your footsteps. So I pray right now, O oh God, as we have this communion, Lord, you says as often as we do it, we are showing your death until you return. May you bless us as we go now, and let the Holy Spirit keep us strong and faithful that we will always be in your presence and walk holy before you every day of our lives. I ask these blessings upon our church, our people, our loved ones, our friends, our neighbors, our companion. Let this church be a church, Lord, open that souls will come and find Christ through this door, I ask. In the strong name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Do we have announcements today? Oh, yes. Good afternoon, church. Let me try that again. Good afternoon. All right, good, good. God is good. Come on, why do you give God a shout of praise for that message today? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Um, just want to give a shout out. Anybody born October? Anybody born October? Yes, okay. 
all right, including myself. Uh, happy birthday to you when it comes, all right? All right. Um, also, just want you to know that the pantry has some um, leftover, not leftover, food from yesterday. <laughs> um, so yesterday day we got an extra um, supply from Amazon Fresh, always really good stuff. Um, so for those who came yesterday, came early, got some, but we do have some more stuff that is left. So on your way out, stopping at the um, kids' room and, um, and help yourself, all right? Um, do just want to give a shout out to our Ebenezer folks, all of those who came out on Friday night and, and just stand with the Lambert family and help them in their time. It was a really, really wonderful homegoing service. Um, uh, everybody, Sister Denise did a wonderful job moderating the service and everybody that worked um, upstairs and downstairs and in the parking lot, we just appreciate you and I know the family do appreciate you. I'm pretty sure you'll hear from them uh, later time, but thank you so much for showing up and, and helping helping out. Um, again, we need your help this, this Saturday. All right, anybody know Brother David? Brother David, everybody know Brother David? There's only one Brother David we have. <laughs> All right. Um, Brother David is such a hard worker in the church, and he's dedicated himself to work so hard. And in this time of need, I'd love for you to come and show him some love. All right? Uh, you may not know his brother, but you know David, right? Yes, and David has always been for everyone that's going through. So please, on this Saturday, we ask that you um, be here with him. It's a 1 p.m. service. All right, so please come on out at 1 p.m. on Saturday to um, celebrate the life of his brother. Also, they're having a prayer meeting on this Thursday evening at 7.30. I don't have the details with the address and all of that, but I'm pretty sure Sister Daly will be sending out something with that. So please be on the lookout for it. But just lock in Thursday evening at 7.30. We're going to go wherever that address is, and we're going to pray with that family. All right? All right. Uh, anybody ready to get fit? Okay, nobody want to get fit, all right? We <laughs> all right, um, yes, um, for some of us, God has kind of enlarged our territory, like myself, uh, and now it's time to take off some of the territory. <laughs> um, but we have a fitness class that is happening. It's happening on next Tuesday, Tuesday, October 10th, all right? Now, um, we're meeting three days a week, um, Tuesdays, Thursdays, at 6 p.m., and then Saturday morning, at 8 a.m., all right? We have to meet those times because of, um, on Thursday we have the Spanish church, so the, the classes will be on time, all right? Listen, the thing is lock and load. The instructor, she's got over 25 years experience, all right, in teaching, and I assure you, you're going to feel so much better, and the pastor speak it already, you know, some of you are going to lose some of that medication. You're going to save yourself some money, all right? Yes, I believe that. All right, so um, we do have a, a quick Zoom meeting, so please, um, if you plan to um, register for the class, um, please see me right after the service. I'll be right over here. Some of you have already registered. Um, we'll send out the information um, for a quick Zoom meeting that we're doing this Tuesday, October 3rd at, um, at 6 6.30 p.m., all right, to just provide you some information about what you need to bring and, and stuff like that for the class, all right? Everybody got it? Okay, save the date. Ebenezer Dance Ministry has an open house also on this Saturday, but in, in the morning, all right? So we have the funeral in the afternoon, but we have an open house for the dance at, at 10 a.m. in the morning. Now, this is not just for the youthful people. They're looking for experienced people, all right? You understand me? So it's not just for the... 25 and under, but if you're experienced and you want to dance, um, they're getting ready to revive the vessels of Judah to dance again, all right? Okay, International Day, International Day 2023, International Day 2023. Yes, it is here, October 21st, all right? Um, tickets are only $20, all right? And kids, five and under, Oh, 25. I'm just reading. <laughs> 25, excuse me. I had $5. For them. Listen, the amount of food that you're going to get, trust me, even if you didn't pay $55, so you'd have worth it, all right? Because you're getting so much food. Uh, and then there'll be a nice cultural program. You get to wear the colors. You get to invite all of your friends. Everybody love food. And they love Caribbean food, too. Yes, Caribbean food is the best food, right? Yes. Y'all didn't believe that? 
you tr if I ever have something at work, I don't bring some Jamaican food. You, 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 but Caribbean food is best. But honestly, please invite your friends, your neighbors. Um, tickets are on sale. They're on sale today, all right? I'm um, pretty sure not only the ticket master, but a lot of the ladies are selling tickets. So make sure you get your tickets, all right? And get your neighbors involved and your co-workers, all right? The government not shut down, so them get paychecks so they can buy the ticket, all right? <laughs> the Ebenezer Church of God, Virtuous Women of Valor, presents Empowering Women Summit. Mark it down, lock it in, November 3rd to the 5th, all right? So that weekend is reserved, all right? The Women Empowering Summit. Ladies, um, they ask that you register for this event uh, via Eventbrite. Um, see Dr. Rose, Sister Lisa, or Sister Maxine. The summit will start on Friday evening, on November 3rd, via Zoom at 7.30. And the Saturday session starts at 10 a.m. in the sanctuary. They will have lunch, all right? So please make sure you register. If you didn't register, you may not get into lunch. Um, no, they, they, they do have lunch for you, but please register, all right? Uh, and on the sun... On the the Sunday morning service is going to be white and gold. All right, wow, it's going to be beautiful. All right, so do remember we have Sunday school on Tuesday evenings at, at um, seven. 30, um, get your, your Sunday school book if you haven't done so yet. And this evening, um, every Sunday evening from 7 to 8 p.m., we got Sweet Hour of Prayer. And the hippest Bible study in the Del Marva region here on Wednesday evening at 7.30. Uh, man, they're giving out some good stuff there too. All right, our young convert, um, we have resumed class. If you're a young convert or you, or, or you want to be a member of the church, um, we have resumed our classes. Um, we are actually meeting on Zoom on Monday evenings from 7 p.m. to about 7.45, all right? Please see me, Sister Paula or Sister Vivine, and we'll give you the information um, for, for the Zoom link, all right? Why don't you stand for the benediction? Uh, as Praise the Lord. Now, as I, I was talking in the middle of my sermon, our projector is gone. So, Bishop... Walters. Yeah, Minister Walters. I wish you would... There's a prophecy maybe one day. But Minister Walters is going to help us put up a new projector this week, coming week. And he will need the help from the men. We've got to rent a lift to go up there and, and do that. It's a big job. But some... TVs at the end so we can have good, you know, information as to when, this, when the sermon is being preached and other things in our church is going to help us. So, please, that's very important. I need volunteers. He may ask you to volunteer. We need you to help volunteer. And one announcement that I have failed to make over and over and over again. This year, November this year, day after Thanksgiving, our church is going on a life-changing trip to the Holy Land. Israel... Egypt and Jordan. It's going to change your life. If you can go, close your eyes and go. <laughs> Do this for yourself, for your own spiritual life. Amen? It's an investment into your life. The Bible will come alive to you, and I have the opportunity of teaching right where it happens. I've been to Israel, I don't know, maybe 22, 23, 24 times. I stopped counting. But every time it has been a real blessing for me, and I want to have the opportunity to teach you on spot. God bless you. Talk to one of our ushers. They'll tell you how you can get on that trip. I, one, one more time. <laughs> one more, sorry. Um, this Friday, this Friday, right, actually, right after service, the young adults um, need to meet right over here. And the youths, youths, youths and young adults right after the service. And this Friday, the men and the ladies and the youths, everybody's meeting this Friday. All right, so come on out. God bless. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, love of God the Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, right? Rest, remain, and abide with us all now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Shake hands with someone you have not greeted before.